Smart contracts are becoming a huge topic in InfoSec and also just in technology. Especially since COVID-19 happened, I feel like a lot of people have shown an interest in just anything technology, cryptocurrency, crypto wallets, and the smart contracts. So I have seen a ton of news on smart contracts getting paid. And if you look at sites like Immunify with their bug bounty programs, they have been offering almost, I wanna say over a million dollars in bounty in some cases on some of these different smart contracts. With that said, I have partnered with Halborn and I've asked them to do this series with me to get my hands on a few of their engineers and team members to explain how anything smart contract works and kind of understand the basics of it, but also talk about the security, penetration testing, and auditing smart contracts. So hi, my name is Naham Sek, and today I wanna to talk about smart contracts. This is episode one, and we're only gonna talk about the smart contract basics. What is a smart contract? What are some of the different languages you can learn? What are some of the tools? And kind of talk about these very basic resources. So if you know the basics already, you don't wanna watch this, skip the video, it's fine, it's completely fine. Uh, but come back for the next episode in a week or two when we talk about deploying your first smart contract. Let's jump into it. I have Farron. He is one of the engineers at Halborn. He's gonna walk us through what smart contracts are and give us the basics. Well, hello, Farron. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm really excited to learn more about smart contracts. Uh, a little bit before we talk, I said, I know as much as a five-year-old knows about smart contracts. So I'm really, really excited to kind of get to know you and kind of learn more uh, about smart contracts from you. Thank you. Just a pleasure to be here and, you know, having this chat with you, Ben. I mean, uh, I always remember the first time I started just in, you know, the security career, just looking on random YouTube videos and now having you on my side chatting with you. It's like a pleasure from my side. Well, it's a pleasure for me to have you on here. Before, I have a million questions for you. Before we jump into the questions, uh, give me a quick background on who you are and what do you do? Yeah, sure. So right now I'm the principal security engineer at Halborn. So mostly what I do are complex projects which come into the company. I also work on the new technologies and new projects that are not uh, that much known on, 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 the, on this field. And uh, before going to the blockchain uh, field, I started doing some uh, binary exploitation and reverse engineering. Also from a from professional perspective, I was doing mobile application security audits and also security researching and weapon testing. So yeah, more or less that's my background right now. I'm at Halborn and enjoying my my day to day. Wow, okay, that's a, that's a lot. I have a, so you say you also do pen tests on smart contracts. Okay, I think I'm gonna, at the end, we're gonna talk about a little bit more of these. So I, I'm gonna, so let's start with this way. I'm gonna tell you what I think a smart contract is. And you tell me if that makes sense at all. Sure. So to my understanding, a smart contract is a bunch of if then statements. So if something happens, then a criteria is met, then the smart contract is executed. But those smart contracts could be practically almost anything, right? It could be anything that you decided when you write it up. Is that an accurate way of explaining something like that to a to my grandmother or to my someone who's not technical? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's a good way of defining like what a smart contract is. But basically, imagine it's like a piece of code, which is executed in a decentralized way. Okay, so imagine like a P2P network where we have okay. a lot of people connected to it, and they all agree on the result of this computation. Okay, imagine like a code which is executed on a P2P network, and okay. they all agree on the result of the execution. Okay, so uh, more or less, it's like. Uh, having your own code, you write code usually, for example, in Ethereum, you write code using Solidity, which is a language similar to JavaScript, okay? okay. And this code gets compiled and gets put in on this P2P network for everyone to interact with it, execute it, and possibly read a state of the, of the blockchain, okay? Okay. So I wanna ask you about some projects, but before we say, when you say everyone has to agree to the smart contract being executed, right? What happens if I wanted to, so let's say I have a project that I put up there, it's already out there, but I changed my mind, I wanna change it. I wanna change something in the code. Can I revert it? How do I revert it? How do I make those changes? So right now, this is very complicated in this space. So uh, this is called like upgradability of the contract. 
for example, in Ethereum, there exist many patterns for you to write in order to have mm -hmm. the contract being upgraded, so being changed dynamically. But um, in general, in this space, it's very complicated because you, uh, once the state is put on the blockchain and everyone agrees on this P2P uh, current state, um, like altering this uh, code, it's like impossible. Once the code is there, you cannot modify it. You cannot touch it. Otherwise, you are violating the current state of the chain. So you need to either de redeploy a contract, okay, and interact with this new contract. So you have to move the state, the old state to the new contract and so on, which is complicated. It's like migrating like a database. And uh, um, right now there exist many patterns for you to actually upgrade uh, pro contracts, okay? One of them are proxy contracts which basically I allow you to keep the same state, but just upgrade the implementation. So just the code that will be executed right. on chain. So more or less like that, yeah. So it's a, it's not as easy as just wanting to change something. It's not like as easy as just submitting, submitting something to GitHub and wanting to change it immediately yeah. and it just gets pushed out. No, 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 no. It's not, not, it's not like that. <laughs> okay. So give us, uh, for a, what is a great example of a smart contract that you think most people are familiar with? Probably I will say, IRC tokens or NFT, I will say, yeah. How does how do those work? So what is uh, what is an NFT? Well, how does that work as a smart contract? So NFT, as all the other smart contracts, is just a piece of code which is deployed on chain. Okay, and depending on the project, um, the the company decides uh, which kind of assets do they want to store on the blockchain. Okay, okay. usually uh, all the NFTs have the same base of code which is uh, uh, just um, imagine like a mapping between users and what users have what, okay? And then for each uh, NFTs that you are storing on chain, you get reference to a JSON object, which is usually stored outside of blockchain, okay? okay. And basically is showing you the image of the actual NFT. So when people think about you are buying an NFT, you are not actually buying an NFT. You are just buying this mapping so your account your address on the blockchain has this nft id associated to you okay so you are not buying the picture the picture is stored usually outside of blockchain so if people are just you know they're not really purchasing just an image even though the image has been stored there right why one why is the price is going higher and higher every time it's being resold and what other things are they getting from buying these nfts yeah, right now, uh, NFTs are started just as a pu pure speculation, just like the store market when you are investing to, to whatever fund uh, there is. But companies are trying to uh, put NFTs to something more, uh, let's say, touchable, okay? Yeah. They are starting to put NFTs to games, let's say, for example, uh, starting to put NFTs, I don't know, to the ownership of uh, like an actual business, okay? Um, but the price associated to an NFT is just pure speculation on what people want to pay for it. I, if let's say if I wanted to get into smart contracts, I, you know, I'm someone's watching this video on YouTube, their interest has peaked or they know some of this information, but they want to go a step further. What are some languages they need to learn? What are some tools they can use? What are some resources you recommend to get familiarized with? Yeah, sure. So uh, first of all, you need to choose the platform. Okay, there are many platforms, many blockchains you can start building on. Uh, I'm most familiar with Ethereum because uh, it's the first one I started doing when I joined Halborn and I was doing mostly security audits on Ethereum. So uh, on Ethereum side, you have right now two main languages. You have uh, Solidity and then you, you have also Viber. Okay, Solidity okay. is like a programming language similar to JavaScript and Viper is just pure Python. So you're writing your smart God. contracts in Python, okay? At the end, all those languages get compiled into bytecodes, and those are the bytecodes that get deployed on blockchain, okay? Once you want to interact with a, with a contract, you're actually executing bytecodes on chain, okay? The results of these computations are agreed on the P2P network. But first of all, you need to choose the platform, then the language you want to start uh, building on, and then a tool that helps you, okay? Because like on C++, on, on every compiled language, you need a tool that allows you to compile and actually execute the code, okay? There okay. exist many tools. You have, for example, Truffle, you have, you have Harhat, you have Brownie, and then you also have uh, other tools, okay? Uh, Harhat and Truffle, they are made in JavaScript, so you are writing your test cases and your deployment in JavaScript, 
And in Brownie, you are writing that in Python. Okay. okay. In Halborn, for example, we have our own custom fork of Brownie, which we think is really, really easy to work on. Okay. And once you have all of that, it's just a matter of like every other programming language. You just yeah. uh, learn the patterns, learn the basics, and start coding your, your ideas. So if I know Python today, would it be a good choice to go after Viper and just learning how to write smart contracts with Viper and using some of these tools, right? Because I feel like Python is a very, very common programming language for a lot of people that are in our field, right? Yeah, it's not it's not something very popular right now on Solidity. So, uh, okay. sorry, on Ethereum. So mostly all the contracts you will see out there are written on Solidity, and you will find more okay. tools and more you know proxy extensions written in Solidity than in Viper. But you work with a Python-based uh, compiling tool like Brony, of course. Got it. So Solidity would be a better choice because it's more su it's more supported in the community than Viper. It is. Got it. Okay. Do you happen to have an example we can show us of how some of these maybe work? Maybe we can do a quick demo of some sort, and then uh, maybe we'll bring you back for another episode. We can be more technical on how to sure, how to create sure. This. We can do a demo for that. Okay. So this is like a quick uh, demo of a smart contract within Solidity. So uh, this is something that we want to deploy in chain uh, on Ethereum chain in this case. So once we uh, compile this, um, this is not a specific tool that I just mentioned before. This is just a playground uh, utility. So once you compile and deploy this on chain, this is what is going to be deployed on 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 really on chain. Those are the bytecodes that will be stored on on the blockchain. Um, basically, here you see as well all the opcodes that will be executed. This is something that we will talk about in another episode. There's more technical stuff on the DVM side. But I just wanted to show you that in reality, you are not storing code. You are actually storing bytecodes on chain. Okay. Apart from that, I want to show you uh, the Ether Scan Explorer. This is basically a fantastic tool where you can see everything that is happening on Ethereum. Okay. In this case, we are going to go for an ARC20 token. Okay. And see, for example, the Binance token. And we are going to look for a transfer that has been done recently. Let's say, for example, this one. And here we can see a lot of information coming up. But at the bottom, uh, if this um, user is interacting with the contract, we can see the function that is being executed. Okay. At the end, this is just uh, random bytecodes that are executed on chain as well. Okay. And here we can see as well the contract. If we go here on the contract part, we can see the actual code that is that was deployed on chain for this smart contract. You can take a look at it. You can even get your ideas to start building tools. And you can even play with it. You can read the state of the contract and whatever thing that you want. So I always recommend you to go and build your own contract, deploy it on test nets, and then start taking a look on Etherscan and playing around everything that you can. So would it be safe to say almost every contract is pretty much open source for everyone to look at and read into and understand how it works? That's the philosophy of blockchain. So basically, once you put something on chain, everyone can look at it. And even though block explorers are, yeah, allow you to upload the source code so you can get verified and you can interact with the actual contract, uh, sometimes people do not publish the code. So you only get the bytecode. But even having bytecode, you can even reverse engineer that yeah. and get decompiled a smart contract. So to wrap this up, if I am looking into getting the smart contract from just developing them and we'll talk about the security part, I feel like at a later time, but so let me get this right. Viper or Solidity is the two languages I could just go for. Uh, get a compile compilation tool like a hard hat or um, so what was the other one? Brownie or no, Truffle. Truffle and Brownie, Truffle right? and Brownie, yeah. Yep. And there are so many more. Do you have another one written in Rust as well? And uh, I believe some in Wasm and C++ as well. So if I, those are a good place to start. And then if I wanted to uh, play around with some of these, I could go to this EVM playground and kind of just execute my code to get an idea of how they work and how they look without actually pushing anything. Actually, there, are, there exists some easier tools for you. This was only to show the byte codes that are being deployed on okay. chain, okay? But for example, you have Remix, which is an online IDE for Solidity which is really amazing. It allows you to deploy everything in chain and interact with it. 
And what would you recommend for people that want to learn solidity? Solidity. Where do I go? I can't even say that. I can't even say it right. <laughs> I'm not even going to say it at all this time. So for someone that wants to learn these programming languages, are there any websites like a Code Academy I can go and learn these from? I believe there are so many. Uh, I I knew I know that there are some courses online that uh, yeah. teach you, but um, having a look on current existing codes, it's my. I mean, it's the go to. So basically yeah. looking at actual codes that are already deployed on blockchain, which we know that they work. It's the best, it's the best option. Got it, thank you so much. That was really, really helpful. Hopefully we get to bring you back again so we can actually look into you know deploying our first smart contract at some point, I mean, for another episode. Uh, but thank you so much, I appreciate it. Is there anything you wanna add before we say bye to you? Just as I said earlier here on the, on the talk, just with you ben so i mean just an hour let's see you on on any upcoming video okay before we wrap this up do me a favor hit that like button hit subscribe and become a nahomi i know nahomi's a thing we're sticking to it but between now and then do me a favor go familiarize yourself with those tools look in those programming languages see what works best for you we'll come back hopefully with the next episode we can learn how to deploy our first smart contract and get to understand them more all right that's it See you all in the next episode. Peace. This is Ben's password for all of his stuff. Get out of here, dude. <laughs>